Good morning, folks. We've got a number of excellent updates today. A look at the end of the storm train in the U.S. We'll go over cosmology and solar physics, and we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun takes the central coronal holes off to the departing limb with its rotation. Near the equatorial position on the incoming limb to the left, we see that we may actually have some bright fields incoming. Could be a little active region there. Let's go next to the solar wind and find yesterday's intensified stream peaked midday UTC, then waned off. The phi angle flip was as relevant as the impacting stream and we did undergo a brief low-level geomagnetic storm right after yesterday's show. The top quakes of the last day were mid-5 range, but in terms of above average for a region, the two four-pointers in the western U.S. continue the above average foreshocks here approaching the summer for the second year in a row. Well, folks, while it was only the tail end of the storm system from the night before, it came hard, bringing high winds, hail, and more tornadoes. This one on I-75 is making the rounds in the mainstream news. But to me, the coherent energy line where the heat and moisture from the south crashed into the cooler, drier air from the north as both flows fed into the low pressure is far more interesting. Those flows must rapidly equalize their temperature, moisture, pressure, and electric potential, and that mixing is what drives the energy of the storm. Let's go next to meteorshowers.org. In the menu, you can pull up many different events throughout the year, including the Lyrid meteor shower, which is supposed to peak tonight. It's not forecast to be a tremendous year for them, but you will see a couple if you manage to get out there. Link to this resource is with the other links for today beneath the video. Up next, Let's get another confirmation that electric currents are the key to solar activity. The flow of energy through sunspot groups is what destabilizes their magnetic field structure within the sunspot and can lead to the eruptive event. When you see the fields here, just know that anything electromagnetic is going to affect them. We're talking about powerful electric currents surge directly through these regions and for the second time this week we'll mention crossing the streams. The electricity just needs to nudge the field flows into collision and we get the solar flare. Stepping up the scale on the sun, they're trying to do a better job mapping the interplanetary magnetic fields, the ones that aren't confined within sunspot groups, but rather reach out and connect to the planets as they stream all throughout the solar system. Well, part of this is a source region study to be able to take their models and get more specific based on the other solar observations taken. Hopefully, they exceed Minecraft resolution here soon. Up next, folks, the big physics story this week is going to be the new gravitational wave they've detected. The first, they say, that is from a merger of different size spheres. Forgetting for a moment the issues with black hole science, let's recall the absurdity with which gravitational waves are found. If you haven't seen this yet, basically they have two sensing units spread far apart and any microsecond delay in signals they're calling a gravitational wave. Never mind that it's going through a water vapor atmosphere, Earth's magnetic field, and ionosphere with endless opportunities for collision and delayed signal on the light year's journey it took to get here, but hey, pretty colors. On to some real science next. They're saying that it is probable that stars from the Milky Way are being flung into the circumgalactic medium by nova events. This is a fascinating bit of physics for stars to bump others off the road and into the ditch, but more importantly, if there are lots of ejected stars out there and still part of the system, it dramatically changes the mass and energy and rotational profile of the CGM region, which of course has been incorrectly thought to have lots of dark matter in there, a dark matter halo. But in reality, it's dust, sparse plasma, and apparently, a sprinkling of stars that have been ejected from the inner system. Now, in the same cosmic vein, there's a growing call for mainstream science to defund SOFIA. And for a moment, let me speak directly to the funding groups, including the White House. This is the single most important telescope currently operated by NASA. You say it hasn't had enough papers. I say its papers are bombshells and the scientific community just doesn't know how to handle them. Sophia is the one that discovered that it's not chaos and gravity, but magnetic fields and plasma turbulence that controls the action of molecular clouds, star formation rates, the lives and even death of those stars. It has teamed up with ALMA to confirm this twice, and yes, when you upend a century of bad science taken for granted, you are going to leave the scientists scratching their heads much more than writing papers. Sophia is critical, and you cannot let it die. 
for the rest of you. Its discoveries are fitted nicely into the larger cosmology picture. Below this video, on our channel page or at the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org, you can find the Plasma Cosmology movie, all of our movies actually, and if you haven't seen the part where we were allowed to be the declassification point for formerly secret studies, maybe jump ahead to about minute 29 and watch from there. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.